Bring in uh, Mayor Jesse Alec. Mayor Petey, but he's the president of the Mayor's Council of Guam. We'll just go ahead and start with our question of the day. Mayor, have you heard if the CDC team is on island? Do tell. Uh, no, I have not. Good morning. I have not heard. I feel like it's a little late in the day today. It, yeah, it's well, on we normally get uh, <laughs> Mayor uh, Jesse in at 7.30, but uh, we move some stuff around. Uh, is this a better time in the morning for you, Mayor? Uh, No, actually, because you just kind of like... 7.30 is better because it's the start of the day than when I'm done talking to all of you great people, I can continue to start my day. <laughs> but any day is fine. Right any time is fine. Right on. But no, I have not heard of the CDC is here. Well, let us know if you do. Oh, it is here. Uh, how was Halloween and, and PD, Mayor? Halloween was nice. We we uh, we had our drive through uh, last night. Everyone came uh, between 6 and 8, and uh, we wiped out all our candy, all our bags of candy. We had uh, some good sponsors this year. Um, you know, we were just grateful. Quite honestly, there there were these sponsors. We didn't even ask for help. They just kind of called me and and gave us gave us our our goodies. So so we're grateful. We'll we'll be thanking them later. Uh, Mayor, yeah, there, went well. Were there people like walking around? Because I wasn't even sure what the guidance actually said. No, I, we didn't, you know what? I didn't see anyone walking around. Um, the houses across our office always are very festive. So first. You know, when people were driving by, they, they kind of just stopped and, and went next door, and that, that was good. Uh, I did not go up to Nimitzel Estates because we were kind of busy down here. Um, and then our MPC members who live in the estates were <laughs> were here helping us, so mm. they couldn't even monitor that. And uh, I didn't hear any any word on how it went. Um, I was going to ask Dr. Wen because he lives up in that area to see if he had any trick-or-treaters. Uh, but I didn't hear. I know that there were some, you know, some families uh, celebrating, but I didn't hear of any any big issues at all. Uh, Mayor, you know, from Halloween um, to All Souls Day, PD is definitely where it's at. Uh, so what, what are you uh, anticipating in preparation for All Souls Day tomorrow? Well, most of the work is done by DPR and, and Veterans Affairs, right, and, uh, for the two cemeteries that we have here. Uh, typically, our, our work is to, to uh, monitor traffic and and control that that aspect of, of the gathering. But because there's no gathering tomorrow, we're hoping that everything's going to you know, go smoothly and that uh, people don't go at one time and you know, spread spread out your visitation of the cemetery. Uh, most people are up there, you know, days before uh, November 2nd. So I, I anticipated people were there yesterday. People will be there today. And, and certainly uh, some will go tomorrow. But we don't have any real big uh, I don't foresee any real big issues there. Uh, I I may have mentioned at one point that uh, DPR did put a gate in at the front, so now it's it's locked and and they're open. Uh, they have they have uh, posted hours, so that kind of is a good thing to regulate the you know the park the cemetery, and um, and we help with that as well. Our office helps with opening the gate uh, every uh, weekend and on Mondays. Uh, share the burden on, on DPR, but I, I, I don't. I don't foresee any issues this year. I'm glad that they're open though, because last year they weren't open, right. and we did have a lot of, of families wanting to go uh, visit their loved ones. On, and you know, it's typical. It's traditional, right, for us as Chamorros and, and as Islanders as well, Asians too, right? So, um, yeah, they're they're open, and like I said, I, I think everything's going to be okay. The good thing is DPR cut their grass. <laughs> the Vicente Lim Chaco Cemetery. So the residents are equally excited <laughs> because it's, you know, everyone is excited about November too because the everything around the estate looks nicer. <laughs> so, <laughs> Any new mini homes uh, that have gone up over at the public cemetery? I, I haven't seen any more homes going up. I haven't even seen any large monuments either or, you know, headstones. Like you've just seen the, the typical. Um, Closer to the ground, <laughs> mm. uh, headstones. Yeah, so I'm, I'm. It seems like they're monitoring that more. Right. How Just are the good. How are the village uh, booster clinics going? So the the booster clinics were filling up. Actually, uh, of course, Dedido was was filling up. Uh, surprisingly, the Sinahanya and the the Inalahan last week, as I was doing an update, 
that was filling up. Um, I have did not request for an update yet today, but uh, you know, I, I should have before I got on. But I, I'm sure that they're, you know, they're gonna fill up. So mm. I, I believe it was Thursday of last week. Everyone was both sites were at least 25 percent full, and so you know that over the weekend that'll fill up, mm. and then then today. So that's it's a good thing. But you know, Dr. Wayne mentioned. Um, about testing and you know you guys were instrumental helpful in our our campaign our very short campaign to get testing done and you know we we just we really wanted to push that more because we've done the same thing over and over again and we, we see the same results you know we can't we have to change it up a little and, and hopefully expect different results or at least uh, or positive or better results right and so, and like you said, testing to, to know, and I think that's, that, that really is what it is, what needs to get done. And so I'm glad that we are testing in our, in our village clinics, right. just so that, uh, just so that it's available. So one of the things that we discussed with the governor last week, and I, I have not yet discussed it with the mayors and I will on Wednesday, is we've noticed that there are government agencies doing testing. Uh, I believe even Adelaide does, has their own testing you know, in their office. So uh, it, it is, we are gonna propose to the mayors it, to do testing in their, in their offices, uh, at least provide it, right? So I'm not sure how they're gonna take that. I'm not sure we have to have a discussion on it, but if the um, majority of the mayors or if a mayor is interested in, in hosting and testing at their office, uh, getting one, at least one, one personnel, one employee test, um, trained to do the testing, then at least it's available in, in the district office. And it doesn't have to have a line, it just is something that can be readily available. And it's not, I think it's helpful not only for the mayor's office and for our operations, but also for our community, right? I mean, it's, it's a little more convenient for, for most people. And we're all about convenience and space, especially since COVID. And so I'm hoping that that little, you know, we have that discussion, uh, something, something positive will come out of that that we could possibly have more testing options available at the district level. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned uh, meeting with the governor. Did you, have you guys gotten any ARP money yet? <laughs> uh, no ARP money, not yet. Uh, I haven't really heard of any of that. And then I, the, one of the, one of the, um, the, the papers today, the front page was about the after school program. Uh, that, you know, all, most of the mayors have uh, after school programs planned, but, uh, you know, that comes, that money is out of the ESF and uh, we still have not yet received it. We, most of us received our award letters, but we haven't received the, 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 the cash or the program. So, the education stabilization funds? That's correct, yeah. This is from so uh, Lieutenant Governor's share? That's correct, yep. Yeah. That's correct. And so that's that'll that'll help us with our after school program and our summer school programs. You know, uh, well, I'm sorry. When does it start? It was supposed, to, start supposed to have started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was supposed to. Yeah, it, everything kind of just depends on you know, on the green. <laughs> so Todd does nothing. So Todd's nothing. No ARP. Nothing even for COVID differential pay. No, no, not, no, not even COVID different. I did ask again, you know, we were following up on it, making sure that, that there are people that need to know that the staff that, that work these, work the pandemic is uh, not getting paid or receive the different. Mm. So, so when you ask, what do they say? Working on it, um, yeah, as usual. Yeah, nothing, nothing uh, groundbreaking in that in that part of the world, for sure. We did have a comment, Mayor. Um, I don't know if you know this at Veterans Cemetery. Uh, are do, do people paint their own tombs, or is that something that uh, the VA handles? And then also, if you could up in uh, the Nimitz Hill Cemetery. I don't. Um, I I can't answer uh, for the Veterans Cemetery. I know people voluntarily paint their crypts up at the at the VA. 
but I don't know what their what their um, their regulations are. I, I can't imagine they can paint any color. Um, I'm sure the white is. I, I can't answer for it. Okay, right on. Uh, did you catch our interview with the congressman? He was uh, very frustrated about uh, kind of like the same thing that we just talked about, uh, how the uh, ARP money has just been uh, slow to know uh, and coming. I watched a little of it, and um, I couldn't do the whole thing, but I saw it. And yeah, I, that's our frustration, right? That's just what it is. I mean, that's from before that, my own discussion with him, and Senator Moylan to, to now, it's still the same thing. It's, you know, we don't see the, we don't see the money. Um, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure. I mean, the NEU designation, um, I can't even comment on it because it's, it's kind of this, just the same thing over and over again. Um, and it's not just one source, it's, it's all the different sources of money. Like I mentioned, the ESF, right? We haven't even, I mean, that we we put those budgets together on our own. I mean, we don't in our in our staff. I mean, most offices are just a staff of two, and uh, we we put all our budgets together uh, in a timely manner to submit to hopefully qualify for some money for our community programs. And um, like I said, we're given our award letter for for. One of the programs, and we still we still have yet to receive the, the money. We have, we can't draw it down. We can't begin because um, you know, we don't have the money. One of the things that 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 money is going to be used for is for a lot of us. We need to prepare the the sites, right? We need to prepare the the facilities because for some it's just been a long time coming for necessary renovation in order to accommodate residents. Uh, others, it's the, like the senior centers, it's, uh, you know, making sure there's filtered air filters, making sure uh, there's, you know, we have some type of uh, sanitization process and maintenance process for the, for the, um, the facility while being used. Um, so there's a lot of prep work that needs to get done before we even start, uh, but none of that can actually begin or commence because there's no money to do it. And we, you know, using our, using our uh, fiscal 22 money is, is kind of out of the question, simply because of the way we, it's, it's restructured. So our budget wasn't decreased overall. Uh, it actually increased by a million, but uh, after paying all our bills, um, only 700,000 is left from that and that 700, some thousand is divided uh, among the 19 villages and uh you know, we've said that before and when what what's left is it's not too much to work with for operations so we can't use that money to um you know to operate these programs for some of us our gas i mean for us in pd alone gas is six thousand a year uh i think it's i think it's like 40 some thousand indebted for it. and you know my total operations budget in PD is fifty thousand. <laughs> so, you know, for the entire year. So we can't we just we can't do it. Man, that's it's crazy. It's that we interview these uh, government officials, well, like yourself, and it sounds like the Great Depression when in fact we have so much in American Rescue Plan money sitting in the bank. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm I don't, I mean, I guess, I don't know what it is. I, I don't want to say what it is because I don't know what it is. I, I can't, citing all the different kinds of approvals and all the different kinds of uh, guidelines that need to be followed. I mean, at this point, I mean, we're going to be two years into this. And it's like, we're still waiting on, on guidance. Um, I'm not sure what else we're, what else we're waiting for. Uh, you hear that, let me know. Well, I heard there's an election next year, so maybe that's it. <laughs> you know what? What's really what I'm really worried about is that I'm worried about our people that have not. Uh, I'm glad that they had the. I'm glad that they had that that um, that job fair for the 70 applications, right? Because at least 70 people will hopefully have a a job and not have to worry so much 
around the holidays. But I'm really worried about the rest of our population that was on Pua and, um, you know, come the holidays and the rest of the, and the start of the new year, I just hope that, that our people are prepared, you know, to live in a, in a different world. I mean, we've all had to change somehow in the way we spend our money, in the way we make our money for some of us. And uh, I just really hope that, that our people make, have, you know, made and continue to make good choices. We're seeing, we're not seeing, you know, at least on the government side, not seeing that come out to us. And then, you know, you can't say that that, sh that they haven't helped because they're gonna, the, the administration will, will tout the different types, the different programs, right? The, the PUA, um, the, the, the other stimulus um, money that, that we receive. Uh, and certainly, I'm sure the residents that receive the money are grateful, but uh, there's no long-term plan for these guys, for the, 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 the residents that, that are suffering. Um, and or that will suffer. And the crazy part about it is there's so much craziness in the world and we've just, we've let all that other stuff go and we're not really taught, you know, I'm not sure if we're, we're worried about it or not, just like the foster kids. It's like here we are for like years, we've been worried about animals and all these other things. And then only to find out that we have 486 children that need a home and you know, so kind of like that, you know, all the, the little things that we do, that we take for granted and not, not worry about until it's too late. I just hope there's a, there's a solution at the end. Well, I admire your hopefulness. Uh, you good, Brie? Yes. Okay, Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. Anything else you want to add before we let you go? Well, we have a meeting. Our regular meeting is uh, this Wednesday. Uh, and so after that meeting, we'll we'll have some other things to share. So if if I don't come on sooner, then uh, I'm sure you'll we'll get it to you guys. But I appreciate it. All right, stay safe. You too. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Yes. Hey, let's take a break, and we'll come back with more of the link, which is brought to you by Pacific Points, Cavo Enterprises, ITE, and Jack in the Box next. The 